Hey everyone! Today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting the dials from Tainted Grey or the Fall of Avalon by Awaken Realms. Hey everyone, Matt here from The Plastic Canvas and welcome to the fifth episode in this Tainted Grail painting series. And today we are painting the dials. These are essentially the counters that get turned down by one each round um, to determine how much longer that particular man here is going to stay in play for. Now, like I've said in some of the previous videos in this series, I went into painting these not sure exactly how I was going to go about it because I didn't know what material they were supposed to be. I wasn't sure if they were supposed to be kind of like stone tablets and so therefore carved in the same way as the men here's or if they were supposed to be metallic. I really wasn't sure. So like I've done with the others, I jumped online um, and had a look at how other people had painted them and there seemed to be just as much confusion with other people as what there was with me because some people have made them look like stone, some metal, some have done all sorts of different colours. There really didn't seem to be much in the way of consistency so it seemed like I was it was pretty well up to me to decide how I was going to paint them. So what I wanted to go for was a um, sort of a worn and tarnished metallic look. Um, so I was going with metal rather than stone because looking closely at the actual texture of them. There didn't really seem to be any texture that indicated that they would be stone, whereas if you looked at the men here, they were very, very clearly made, um, you know, carved out of stone. So I decided to go for a metallic finish because the texture was very smooth. So to build up the effect of sort of the weathering and that they've been a bit battered and tarnished, I've built this up over several different layers to build some different effects. And so I just started off with a black prime and then just left it there um, because I wanted the base of the metallic paint to be very, very dark that it was going on top of. So then I used one of my just sil silver metallics and I just kind of dry brushed it on and I didn't sort of really worry about which edges it did and didn't pick up because I wanted some of it to not touch the, the prime so that there was some that was metallic and then some that was un sort of painted at the bottom. And so there was already kind of some differing levels of, of finish going on there. And then straight over that, I threw a black wash just to knock all of that shine right off, um, but still have the metallic look. And then I just went back um, and did another dry brush, but I only just sort of picked out just bits here and there so that there was now some shine in some parts, um, but most of it wasn't. So it kind of looked like, yeah, it had sort of been beaten in some spots, but maybe not so much in others. And then I went on to um, building up the, the rust effect that I'm doing now. So I used Typhus Corrosion, which is just a Citadel technical paint, um, to start to build up the base of the rust effect. And this effect is built up over several layers using different types of paints because rust is not a consistent finish. So you can't paint rust in just one go. So if you have a look at something that is actually rusty, you'll see that first of all, the whole surface of you know the metal isn't rusty. There'll be parts that are rusted and parts that aren't. And rust always has a starting point and then it spreads out from there. And so you'll end up with where it started will be where the rust is its most concentrated and thickest or that sort of thing. Um, and then it will feather out to where it then meets the unrusted steel that it hasn't spread to. And then within the points that are actually rusted, you'll have different thicknesses and then different amounts of orange and brown and different colors like that. So it isn't all one uniform color and finish. It does shift in thickness and color. And so I'm trying to create that here. So what I did is I started off with Typhus Corrosion, which is just a Citadel technical paint, and I decided where I wanted the rust to, to have started from, and that's where I put the Typhus Corrosion down, and I feathered it out so that it then blended out to the unrusted parts. And then after that dried, I then um, put some more Typhus Corrosion 
in the you know where I wanted the the rust to have started from just to thicken it up a bit there and then I used a new rust wash from Vallejo that I've just recently gotten and I just put that over all of the rust spots just to start to give it a bit of an orange tinge um, and even kind of blended it out a little bit into the unfinished sorry the unrusted parts um, just so that yeah, I'm just starting that orange tone and then I went to my riser rust which is a, a Citadel um, dry brush paint and I went back to you know the sort of the point of origin I suppose for the rust um, put some of that down and then uh, really blended it out um, so um, it was just kind of giving a little bit more of a tinge to um, to all of the rusted areas. Then when that had dried, I then went back with another layer of the riser rust, put it down in that spot where the rust was beginning, and then blended that out a little bit more, but just not quite as far as the, as the first layer. And then I just kind of kept repeating that, always putting it down in the same spot, but just not feathering it out quite as far every layer until I got to the point where I just put it down right in that spot where it was the rust was starting and then I didn't blend that out at all and that just really built that contrast so you've got that kind of brightish orange rust right where the rust would have begun and then it gradually feathers out to just where that typhus corrosion blends out into the um, um, the, the, the steel that hasn't been rusted. Um, and then you can see I, well first of all, I then went to paint the, the grail that was on um, the middle of that first side um, in gold. Absolutely hated the way that that looked, so I just went back over it with the, the metallic paint um, and then a, a new wash over the top of that. And then I painted the numbers that are around the edge of the of the dials. And I originally did them in gold. Um, now I'm picking them out because they are actually really, really hard to read. And it is really important that you can read them quickly. Um, and so when sitting around the edge of the table, they need to be quickly identified. So yeah, did them in gold, but it just looked way too bright and... Um, blinging I suppose compared to the effect that I'd built up over the um, the rest of the surface so I then got a new bronze um, paint that I've gotten a Vallejo one and I, I redid it in that and that was much much better so it still stood out which was the point of painting it so it was important that it still stood out but it wasn't so over the top that it looked really odd compared to the the tarnished surfaces that I painted around it um, and then that was the first side done and now I'm just doing the exact same process on this side so you can see I've done the dry brushing then the wash um, and then the typhus corrosion um, then the wash and now I'm on to doing the the rust effect here so you can see just with the the riser rust there I'm just feathering the edges out so it's a gradual transition because again rust has that starting point and then it feathers its, its way out until it meets the, the non-rusted points. Um, one thing that I did do when painting the numbers on here, and you'll see as I, I start here soon, is with the number one, it's got a really, really odd shape to it. It looks more like a V than a one, and then you might think, oh, it's Roman numerals, but the rest of the numbers look like two, three, four, and so on. So I didn't paint the entirety of the number. I just painted like the, the vertical part of the one and just returned it a little bit, um, just to kind of get that little flick, you know, that's at the top of the number one, um, just so it is clearly a one. But outside of that, it was just, yeah, just, just picking out the numbers. And so now, other than using the bronze to pick out that skull in the middle there and putting a black wash over the top, these dials are done. Um, so yeah, the main focus there was just on gradually building up that worn and tarnished look because in reality, something like rust doesn't just happen overnight. There are stages that it goes through. And so the same thing needs to happen when painting it. That effect needs to be built up over, over several layers. So thank you very, very much for checking out this video. I hope um, you've enjoyed watching it and you've sort of found something in there that you can maybe use in your own painting 
Um, if you liked it, please do hit the like button and make sure you subscribe as well for future videos as well. And please do stop by the Facebook, Twitter and Instagram accounts that I have set up for this channel um, so that you can see what videos are going to be coming up in the near future. And if you use anything from these videos in your own painting, I'd love it if you could post it to there um, so that I can see um, what your painting ends up looking like as well. So this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.